I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. You got to learn this one now. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. Because this is what you're going to have to do. Because let me tell you something. As successful as you've been up to this point, once again, I congratulate you to the fullest. But let me tell you something. You bounce to get to fail. You, cause you finna taste life like it really is. See them people up here, they tired of buying you laptops and iPhones and sneakers and all that. They hoping with everything in them that this degree flips the script. That you one day buy them a TV and another house. If, if, look, I got seven kids. All seven of my kids either they graduated or they in college now. You know why I send them to school? So they can pay me back. That's the only reason. I just, I just want my money back. If they could just give me a ROI, a return on investment, give me the money I dumped into y'all. Just give it back to me. You know how much paper I don't spend on these kids of mine? But you got to learn how to fail though, and win anyway. You got to overcome. So now here's the lesson. Behind every moment of adversity, Every single moment of adversity in your life, two things are going to happen. There's going to be a lesson and there's going to be a blessing. You got to wait on both of them. If you let the adversity crumble, if you focus on the adversity, you will lay there and wallow in the fact that you have failed. Because failure coming. But life is 10% what happened to you. It's 90% what you do about it. Man, so what you fail. It's not really failure though. Every time you fail, it's a valuable, taught, learned experience that makes you greater for later on. They didn't tell you this at ASU. Once again, I can only use the blue. December 21st, I hosted Miss Universe. Do you know, in that moment of failure, you know what really happened to you? The biggest mistake on television. Do you know, one of my prayers, because every morning I have a gratitude prayer. I have a list of 89 things that I read before I start my day. I don't wake up without reading it. I don't go to bed. It's on my iPhone. It's under my notes section. I have a gratitude prayer. Because one of the principles of success is the more you're grateful for, the more he gives you to be grateful for. Look, I don't know but four or five scriptures. I done done one of them already, so I ain't got but three more. But them four or five ones that I know, they four or five good ones, though. They got me here today. So now in gratitude, when you show God gratitude, he give you more stuff to be grateful for. So I wake up in the morning, I thank him for listening to me. In my gratitude prayer, I put in several requests. One of my requests, because I have businesses overseas, one of my requests was, I was asking God to increase my global persona and reputation. Now, I didn't appreciate the way he did it. I did not care for the route he took. I was really looking upside God's head. Hey man, because the day after, my name on social media was Google two billion times in 48 hours. I was on the front page of 64 countries newspaper. He had increased my global persona and reputation but it happened in a moment of adversity and see this is how God worked man this is why you got to grab this for me now it happened in a moment of adversity I shamed myself man it was humiliating I had death threats we got security my wife will tell you with her fine self sitting over there what's up girl I see you mm -hmm. love you back stay with me thank God for that over there every day if he ain't done nothing for me, he gave me that day over there. That was the adversity. We got security at our house now, don't we? 
I have guards that come to my house. That's in my yard behind my gate. We had serious death threats. Columbia, Columbia was so upset. You know, them boys, they sell drugs. They got drug cartel over there. You got, you know, when they mad at you, you got to pay attention. You know, say, you can't just play them off. You know, there ain't no skinhead. I had death threats. I had so many memes done about me. Some of y'all did the memes yourself. I had friends on TV that I thought was my friend just doing memes about me. Man, just, it was a week of just agonizing humiliation. Every newspaper, every morning show wanted to interview me. I wouldn't do no interview. There was some adversity had hit my life. And as people was trying to make fun of it, my family was in pain. We were suffering. But what I tell you though, behind every moment of adversity, there's two things. There's a lesson and there's a blessing. Here was the lesson. They ain't going to get me like that no more. What you put in that teleprompter has to match what you put on the card and it's got to coordinate with the IBF that I had in my ear. Because everything on that monitor and everything in my ear and on that card, the next name according to the teleprompter was Miss Columbia. Miss Columbia! Oh, it was a great moment. I went all the way in the back. Two minutes went by. Ain't nobody said nothing. Then they discovered it was a mistake. Then they said, we got to fix this. The guy in my ear said, we'll straighten it out in the morning news. I walked out there myself. I decided. I'm walking back out there. The man in my ear said, where you going? What are you going to do? You said we got fixed it. So I went out there and took the whole bullet myself. They changed the card from all three days we heard. They never did a runner up because it was a new company. They did it different. Hey, they messed up everything. I took the bullet and the blame. Because my mama, the Sunday school teacher, and my daddy, the coal miner, was alive in it. Do the right thing. Be a man, own up. Now, that was the lesson in it for me. Now, the blessing. Hang on. Because you don't know what God's going to do. A few weeks later, I have Miss Columbia on my talk show. Miss Columbia gave me the highest rating I've ever had in the history of my four-year-old talk show. Blessing number one. Blessing number two, T-Mobile called and paid me millions of dollars to do a Super Bowl commercial. A cha-ching! They paid me so much money, I go out there next year and say the wrong name again. You got to wait and see what God got for you. I told my wife, I said, I always wanted a Super Bowl commercial. Said had one, they never gave me one. He gave me all of that, increased my global persona. We now have villas in 12 countries, free villas that we can go to, eight bedroom villas. I can come for a month, me and my family absolutely free. See what God do? You got to work through it. You got to work through the adversity. When adversity hits y'all and it's coming, remember there's a lesson and a blessing. You got me? All right, next thing I need for y'all to know. This is the third lesson. Quit asking God to make your life easy because he ain't going to do that. See, people, y'all go to church, man. Y'all got all these scriptures y'all memorized don't apply none of them to your life. God ain't finna make your life easy. Lord Jesus. Lord, I don't want this on me. Sorry. Lord, take away all my worries. That's you worried. Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Lord, I'm so tired. Lord, help. what y'all doing? Quit asking God for that. You got to have some faith. See, listen to me. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. You got to have faith, man. If you're going to graduate and whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, you got to put some faith on it. You, you can get through with all this here. This, you, you're going to get your degree. And man, I can't tell you how big this is. But it's going to be a piece of sheepskin that's going to hang on your wall. You got to go do something. You got to get some faith in your life. Lord Jesus, I want my life to be easy. It ain't finna to be easy. You're going to lose some loved ones along the way. 
You're going to not get the job you want. Somebody on your job one day going to come in and hand you a slip of paper and tell you they don't even want you here no more. One of your companies is going to up and relocate and you ain't going to have the money or the resources to go with the company. You're going to go outside the club one day, your car going to be gone. You know, people steal, people steal, people steal. I didn't say repoed, I said stole. Your car going to be gone. You're going to drive up one day, your house going to be on fire. Lord, Lord, Lord. Now your house fully ablaze. What is you asking God to take the fire off your house for? Your house is already on fire. Lord Jesus, had him drive my car back up here. Thieves don't return cars. Faith don't make it easy, man. Faith make it possible. I rode a bike for four hours and a treadmill and elliptical machine for four hours every day for a month to raise money for my family. Somebody said, man, you're 59 years old. I know you can't believe it, but they said, you're 59 years old. How you going to do your radio show and ride this bike and treadmill for four hours? I don't know. I do not know. They said, man, that's impossible. Have you ever done that for four hours in a row? I said, no. They said, well, how you going to do it? I said, I'm going to use some faith. They said, what you mean, man? That's hard. I got it hard. But faith don't make it easy. Faith make it possible. You know what I did? I tried to raise a million dollars for my mentoring camp. I got on that bike, that treadmill, and lived for four hours every day for a whole month. Didn't miss a day. Only got off a bathroom break. All I wanted was a million, but here come God with his grace again. He be killing me with his grace. I tried to raise a million dollars. You know how much we raised? $1.8 million. That's that grace. That's that grace I'm telling you about. He give you above and beyond anything you can think on that. You got to put some faith. The last thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to let y'all go. But man, I want y'all to come across here and get this paper. Your greatness is in your imagination. Uh-oh. This is the heart. This is the one. This one, I'm closing with this one. This is the one where ain't nobody going to be able to follow me. See, whoever come up here next, I'm a headliner. Hard to go behind the headliner. Listen to this. Your greatness is in your imagination. Don't get this degree and forget about your imagination. I'm going to teach you something now. If you don't get nothing else I say, I need everybody's attention in here. Because this is for everybody. At my mama's church, there was a scripture that they used to read. And every time they read it, the church went crazy. And the scripture was about faith. The scripture said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. Okay, you've all heard it. I heard it around the room. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Boy, when they said that in my mama's church, everybody in the building stood up and started clapping. I did too. But can I be real with you? I didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> I just didn't. You know what I mean? Let's be real. Come on now, that King James Version, that's a little rough sometimes. I got to get that Bible with about the four different translations in it because the King James, thither thou, henceforth, furthermore, I'm out. I'm out. Man, my reading comprehension ain't ever been good. I went to high school and I hit 695 in my graduating class. I graduated 690. I gave them five people hell every time I saw them too. I didn't get that Bible verse until one day I was reading a book. And in this book there was a quote by Albert Einstein. And he paraphrased that scripture. You know what I'm saying? He took it and put it in regular English where a dude like me could get it. You know what Albert Einstein said? Look at here now. He said, that lady said, what did he say? That's why I like working in front of y'all. He said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. You got to get this now. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. 
Man, do you know what that means? This was good news for me. I needed to hear this because you know what that meant? That meant everything you ever imagined is real. But uh-oh, it's not only real. It was God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. Oh man, trip me out now. Trip me out. Man, I almost start crying. Do you know how bad I needed that information? See, you've been thinking that your imagination is hopeless pocus. That it's just some some thoughts, them random thoughts. But let me trip you out though. Have you ever have you ever tripped on this before? Do you know that it is impossible for you to think an impossible thought? That is impossible. You ain't that smart. So how did that imagination get in your head? You want me to tell you? It was God. God put it there. He put it there to show you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. This whole time you've been imagining stuff. It was God been showing you something he got for you. Your problem is though, you tell your imagination to the wrong people. See, if you want to kill your big dreams, tell it to a small-minded person. Oh, 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 they shoot it down every time, don't they? Bet you ain't know I was going to say this, did you? Yeah, see, listen to me. This is what it's about now. See, quit telling everything to everybody. See, you go up and you tell it to your friends and your so-called loved ones. And because you think they care about you. You know how many of y'all that had a really wonderful idea? Something God showed you? A business, a transfer, an opportunity, more, more education, more training. And man, this can change your world. You know how many of y'all that had this wonderful idea and you went in there and took it to that so-called friend and loved one and they shot it down? And because you thought they loved you, you thought they had your best interests at heart, so you believed them. Man, they was wrong. They was wrong. If God had a wanted it in their head, he'd have put it in their head. He put your imagination in your head. Don't let this degree mess up your imagination. Your greatness is in your imagination. Now let me tell you how this works. Everything you have in here today, everything you are, is simply because you imagined it and you believe. You said you got a college degree. You're getting a degree today because you imagined it. But guess what? You believed it. Guess what? You're getting a degree today. You see how this works? Let's, let's make it real simple. How about that hairstyle on your head? How you think it got up there? See, everybody has style in here different. It's the one you imagined would look good on your head. You believed it, that's the one you got. How about that outfit you wore? That's the one, you know what? That outfit was just on a coat hanger somewhere. It was just dangling on a coat hanger. You imagined it on your body. You believed it would look good on you. That's the one you got. That car you drive, anybody make you buy that car? There was a whole lot of cars on that lot. You went in there, you imagined yourself driving off the lot in that car. If you'd imagined the Rolls Royce, he'd have probably gave you that one. But now you wanted the Prius. So now you're driving off the lot in the Prius. See, I am a product of prayer. I'm a product of grace, mercy, forgiveness. My mama prayed for me all the time. So here I stand, a product of that. But let me tell you something else though. I'm also a product of my imagination. See, I imagine some of that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Your imagination is the evidence of things not seen. Because in your imagination, can't nobody see it but you. Now if you're in here and you think you're too old to hear what I'm saying to you, my best example 
It's Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know if you noticed the picture of the man on the bucket, but he old. He ain't 30 years old. Colonel old. Colonel had been telling people his whole life, I got the best chicken in the world. Ain't nobody believed him. They didn't give him a franchise till he was in his 60s. Kentucky Fried Chicken sell more chicken than anybody in the world. So if you're sitting in here thinking you're too old, I'd rather be rich and hit it in my 60s than to die poor and never have hit it at all. Now, last thing, and I'm out your way. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. Let me ask you a question. When you go to the movie, and you get that real early, and you get your popcorn and you sit down, before the movie starts, what do they show you? A preview of a coming attraction. Have you ever seen a preview and the movie ain't come out? Oh, the movie coming out. Whether you go or not, the movie coming out. Whether you like the trailer or not, that movie do a hundred million at the box office. You might not like the actor. That actor get an Oscar for that movie. The moral of the story, the next time your heavenly father shows you a preview Go to the movie. You're probably starring in it. I bet you'll like it when you get out there. Appreciate y'all having me. Thank y'all. But God loves me the way I am. Now, I'm constantly trying to improve myself, but I got news for you. God loves you right where you at. Right where you at right now. And I'm going to just tell you a little something. All of you, you're in the process right now. You're in the process of becoming what God wants you to be. See, the reason you wake up every day, the reason you keep waking up, is because God ain't through with you yet. If God was through with you, you wouldn't wake up no more. But he keeps waking you up because he still has something for you that you've yet to receive. But you have to start living your life in expectation. You have got to start expecting great things to happen for you in order for it to happen. It is the law of attraction. It is real. It is nothing fake about it. The Bible says a man is as he thinketh. If you live your life in expectations, that's what happens to you. If you live your life in despair, that's what happens to you. If you say all men are dogs, you're going to meet every last one of them. I'll never be rich. You won't. You won't. The moment you change the frequency that your tower emits, the moment you change that frequency, different things come back to you. I'm telling you this how it works. I'm going to just say this fast as I can. I'm going to let you go. If you change your attitude, change your altitude. Listen, the reason you came to this show today was to be entertained. But a lot of y'all came to this show, and I ain't because you needed to hear this. All I am is a piece of conduit. I'm a piece of pipe. God just tell me what to say. I don't pick what I'm going to say at the end of the show. God just tell me what to say. Somebody in here needed to hear this. Somebody, you just needed that little moment, man to get you to thinking a little bit differently so you can get the life God got for you. God wants to show you all. He wants people that he can use in that example and say, hey, this is what I do for people. If you call on me and you believe in me, this is what I do for people. I raised my hand a long time ago. Use me. Show them, show them how you take an old hoop. Tell them how you take a street boy. Tell them, show how you can take somebody ain't got no education. Take me. Take somebody that don't even talk that good. Take somebody who flunked out of school, on his third marriage, lost everything, lived in a car for three years. Take me and show somebody what you can do through me. Guess what he did? He picked me up. He put me in a world I knew nothing about. God will do the same thing for you.
change your attitude, you change your altitude. If you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. I told everybody at 10 years old I was going to be on TV. I had a little problem when I said that. I had a severe stuttering problem. I could not talk outside of my house. I went to school, church, anywhere I locked up. I couldn't go to the store. I, 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 I just stuttered profusely. I, it was a horrible experience. How many times? Has God showed you something in your imagination that you thought was so wonderful? And then you took it in there to your family and your friends and you shared it with them and they shot it down. You know why they shot it down? Because they couldn't see it. You know why they didn't see it? Because God ain't show it to them. He showed it to you. God put it in your imagination. He don't put it in other people's imagination. Stop telling your visions to other people because they're not going to see it. Why you think you keep imagining opening a business? Why you keep imagining graduating, getting a better job? Why do you keep imagining buying a house? Why do you keep imagining driving a really nice car? Why do you keep imagining getting rich one day? Why do you keep imagining that? Because God is talking to you. He's showing you something that he has for you. He puts it in your imagination, man. See, God is good, man. You've got to understand how good God is. He ain't playing with you. He the real deal. He created you, and then he even showed you what he got for you. You got to start believing in your imagination. You got to start talking to him about these stuff you be seeing. But you have not cause you ask not. So if you see the vision, the imagination, but you don't ask God for it, what you want him to do? He showed it to you. Faith without works is dead. So now you got to put in work. All of y'all sitting in here, you want a better life, correct? Have you, haven't you imagined a better life? Okay, who who you think he showed it to? He showed it to you. Why you think he showed it to you? Because he want to give it to you. But if you don't work, if you don't ask him for it, he cannot give it to you because he created us with the power of choice. We make choices every day. If you decide that you will be poor, there's nothing I can do. You're going to be poor. If you decide to be rich today, who going to stop you? Who? If you decide you want to be rich, all you got to do is start. Why not? Who going to stop you? Unless you tell it to the wrong person. Mama, mama, listen to me. I'm going to be rich. Anybody rich in this family? Go in there and sit down somewhere. Get yourself a good job. Oh, mama, you must be right. No, mama could be wrong. Because what you have in your imagination, God didn't show it to your mama. I'm sorry. He showed it to you. Listen to me. If y'all don't do nothing else, write everything you imagine down. Write it all down. Pray about it and watch what happens. Watch what happens. Because let me tell you something. If God can fix me, you have no idea who you're looking at. You have no idea what I've done. You have no idea what I've been through. You, you wouldn't even talk to me if you knew what I had to do to be here. But God is in the forgiving business. God is in the get your life together business. God is in the turn it around business. God is in the saving business. God did all that for me. So I'm telling you right now, if God can fix Steve Harvey and turn him into this, I bet he can turn you into that. If you want to be successful, and you want to be happy. Those are the two things that's common to most, most people. You're looking at a person who was neither one of those for a long period in my life, man. It's a lot of, a lot of pain in my life. No more than nobody else. I just had a lot. But I learned along the way, everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processing. That's all he's doing. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. 
And if you need to be tough when you get to where you're going, then he going to toughen you. If you got to be more caring along the way, he going to let you have some trials come your way that's going to have to produce that in you. What happened in my life was getting where I've gotten to today and where I'm even headed to, I had to be tough. So he toughened me along the way. I had to learn how to appreciate a lot. So he took everything. To really understand the value of money, I had none. To just appreciate simple things, what I'm gonna eat today, where I'm gonna wash up at, where I'm gonna bathe. He sent me through a trial of being homeless for three years. I lived in a car for three years. All of that, that I was going through, that I was tripping with, that I did not appreciate or understand, I understand it now, because I'm on the other side of them troubles. And I understand what all them troubles was for. And even though I did not understand or appreciate the route he took me on, it was the route I had to go on. See, the route you on right now is the route you got to take. And it's very uniquely yours. This thing you going through, this just uniquely yours. You just got to understand you ain't the only one. You ain't the only one going through it. Now, in the order that it's going to happen, it's just yours. See, God made us very different. This is a, this God we got. God is amazing. He created you so individually. Do you know that it's close to 8 billion people on earth now? Do you know that it's almost 8 billion people on the earth? Do you know how many billions of people have died? Do you know that if you dig up all them people that have died and all the people that are presently here and every last one of them that he going to make in the future, not one of you have the same fingerprint. Who do that? Who could possibly be so precise in his infinite wisdom that he created you so uniquely that ain't no two people got the same fingerprint? That's crazy. Man. That's real crazy. Eight billion people, you can't duplicate it. The billions that done died, you can't duplicate it. And the ones that's coming will not duplicate it. God a bad boy, man. He's a bad boy. He's a bad dude, man. You know what I mean? People are funny, though, man, the way they try to do business. Hollywood is an ugly business, man. It's not, it's not anything like any other job. They do what they want. And they create, they make up a reason. And a, a, a lot of it is you can just, you know, a guy just don't like you. But the one thing about me, man, I've always been resilient. I've never been afraid to reinvent myself. And here's, here's the key for everybody. When someone closes a door in your face, all you have to remember is when God allows them to close the door in your face, all God wants you to do is walk up the hall. It's some more doors. You just got to walk up the hall. Because I can promise you, he got a better door that he wants you to go through than the one that got shut in your face. That's a fact. That's a fact. But what happened to people is they stand there beating on the door. Open it back up. We're going to do a write-in campaign. Why are you leaving? I got to have my job. What about my benefits? Hey, stop. The door is closed for a reason. Because God just wants you to walk up the hall because he got another door. It's bigger. And when you open it and get behind it, you ain't going to believe what's back there. But you will never get to it if you stand in front of that door crying. Please open it back up. Help me, my family, stop. Go up the hall, man. Th these people that close doors in your face, they ain't the only door. They ain't the only door. God is the creator of all doors, man. I'ma just go see what else he got for me. I don't even worry about that. Here's another one. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Oh, this is a very dangerous one, young people, because now don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, that would depend on what your basket is made of, wouldn't it? If you got it in the right basket, you got to put all your eggs in one basket. How else you going to make it? Success is an all-out assault. 
it's everything you got into one direction in order for it to be successful. You can't open up six businesses at the same time. You got to open up one, pour your all into that. You can't go get, you got to go to college to get a degree. You can't enroll in six colleges. You got to focus, man. Put all your eggs in one basket. Make your basket out of work, hard work, faith, prayer. Put all that in that basket, glue that thing together, and put them eggs in that basket so you can be what you want to be. Because you're not going to be successful if you don't put all your effort into one thing. You ain't going to make it, man. Success is difficult. The road to success is always under construction. It ain't ever easy. It ain't clear. It ain't open. You got to do that. And be wary of this one right here, though. Always have a plan B. Let me tell you why I never have a plan B. See, do this so you'll have something to fall back on. Oh, you can go do that, but do this so you'll have something to fall back on. Let me tell you something. In order to really be successful, people who really got it going on, they focused on one thing. Bill Gates did Microsoft until he got plenty of money. Now he can do anything he wanted to do, but he did Microsoft. He did Microsoft. You can believe that the dude that came up with Google, he was making Google. He made Google. They made Yahoo. They, they did. They, they did that till they turned into something. Then they branched out. Plan B. In order to have a plan B, you have to take time away from plan A to prepare plan B. So when you take time off A, you're reducing the effort in your plan A. They asked me, but Steve, so has one of your plan A's ever failed? Yes. Yes, my plan A has failed. Did you have a plan B to fall back on? No, I did not. They said, well, damn, man, what'd you do? I got another plan A. I ain't never had nothing but the A plan. I make no preparation for failure. I ain't got no plan for B. I'm my own got B. I got A, man. I got A. I was going to tell these jokes until I turned them into a money-making venture. October 8, 1985, I walked in Hilarity's Comedy Club. I won an amateur night for $50. I went to work the next day. I quit my job. My first wife said, this is ridiculous. We got these twins. You can't quit your job. I got to go. This is it. This is all I've been dreaming about. I see a way. A light bulb went on. Hey, man, when I won, when I won that night, I cried for an hour all the way home. I cried because it was like, man, God, I see it now. This is what I've been waiting on. I walked into one comedy club, won $50. Went to work next day selling Commonwealth Life Insurance, quit my job making $675 a week. I made $50. The first month in comedy, I made $150. The first year in comedy, I made $3,000. My wife left me. I saw that coming. I, saw, I said, her and her mama, uh, her and her mama, uh, they made that joint decision together that, I, that every time I used to drive home, you ain't going to ever be nothing. It took me years. I lost everything. I became homeless. I lived in a car for three years. Lord have mercy. I just kept that plan A. I kept that plan A, man. I told these jokes. I told these jokes. I took a gig for 125, 250. I drove 14 hours to make 175 dollars. Gas was way cheaper back then, so it, it made sense. I go out there and do the gig, man. Sent whatever money I could home. So now I'm homeless. I can't do nothing. Three years I lived in a car. Had an occasional hotel every now and then. But three years I lived in a car. You know, I kept doing, kept telling them jokes. When my family members would catch me, Steve, come on home. I call home and ask for money. Steve, come home, get a real job. I said, no, I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to be all right. Can you just, can you wire me $50? Can you wire me 75 My brother said, don't ever call me no more ask me for no more money. I ain't got nothing to pay. You need to be a man and come home and get a real job. So I, I couldn't call nobody no more for help because they said they weren't going to help. So cool, I stayed out there. Look at me. And I ain't bragging. Look how God is. God is amazing. He 
keep the faith in the things that you cannot see. God got something for you. I ain't see this. I didn't see this when I was living in the car. I ain't see none of this. Man, you know, I'm an emotional dude. You know, I cry. Somebody asked me something, Steve, at times look on TV, you cry. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you knew my trip, you cry too. Matter of fact, every time you see me, your ass all just bust out crying. But I kept the faith. I relied on God's grace. I kept that plan A, and I'm standing here today. And I say to everybody, if you learn those principles of success, I don't care where your life is today. The life you got planned for yourself, the one God got mapped out, way better than the one you got planned for yourself.